can we trust our mains power meters? And how efficient are the power supplies of our gadgets? Essential questions if you want to optimize your electricity bill. Let's have a closer look. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In the last video, where we developed a strategy to optimize electricity consumption, I promised to test power meters. So in this video we will Have a look at how AC power is measured and where errors can occur. Check if typical power meters are accurate by comparing them with a calibrated power meter. Check if we can avoid a cloud if we want. And finally, we will measure the efficiency of a few typical power supplies with our precise power meter to check if cheap Chinese products are as bad as their reputation. This is the selection of meters. A simple KWS AC300 manual power meter. A KWS AC301 with an RS485 interface. A Sonoff POW Elite. A Shelly Plus 2PM. A Tuya meter with Sigby. And a Tuya meter for DIN rail mount. I did not select plug meters, because most are incompatible with our connectors. I assume this would be the case in many other countries too. So I connected cables with the correct connectors to all meters. The advantage? They are also readable in hidden places and can easily be used for permanent mounting. I use a Metrahit energy multimeter as a reference. It has an accuracy of roughly 0.4%. If you are unfamiliar with RMS and the power factor, I suggest watching video number 347, where you will learn about it. For direct current, power equals voltage times current. Simple if the voltage and current are stable over time. But the mains voltage changes all the time, which makes it very difficult to calculate power. Mains power can kill you. So do not experiment if you do not know what you are doing. To avoid reference to ground problems and protect my oscilloscope, I use a differential voltage probe and a coil around one wire to measure current. This voltage curve should be a sine wave, but obviously it is quite distorted. This creates the first problem. To get accurate voltage readings, we must frequently measure the voltage and then calculate the area below the curve. This is the only way to get the true RMS voltage for distorted curves. It gets much more challenging when we look at the second component of the power calculation, the current displayed on channel number 2. Let's start with an old Wolfram bulb that should behave like a resistor. The voltage and current curves are sinusoidal and have no phase shift. To get power, we must multiply the current and voltage in each point and add them up. It is evident that the current and the voltage have to be measured simultaneously. Otherwise, the power would be wrong. Let's replace the old one with a modern IKEA LED bulb. Of course, the voltage stays the same and the current is much smaller. So it consumes much less power. But there is more. The current is no more proportional to the voltage. Here it becomes evident that our power meters have to measure lots of points and do the calculations. Let's try a vacuum cleaner. Again, a different profile. The current peak is behind the voltage peak and its curve is adapted to the needed power. Here is the maximum speed and here is the minimum. Again, we need a meter that can measure fast and do a lot of calculations. And now comes the worst. An old true color bulb. Look at that. Here you need high speed sampling if you want to get accurate power values. We also see that such loads can create radio frequency interference on lower bands. By the way, such an old fashioned radio still is a good thing to have in every household. Let's look at another typical load, the power supply of my new mini PC bought after my video about the Raspberry Pi replacement. 
Many viewers wrote that small servers with the new Intel CPUs consume much less power. We will later see if this is true. Its curve, similar to the vacuum cleaner, is adapted to the needed power. If the current and voltage are proportional, it is, as in the case of the Wolfram bulb, the power factor is 1.0. If the current peaks are shifted like with a vacuum cleaner, the power factor gets smaller. The same applies if the current is not sinusoidal. Such curves can create headaches for utility companies. This is why they charge big customers for low power factors. Look at this power supply used in data centers. It has a power factor correction that controls its current consumption to be close to the voltage curve. Small customers like us, fortunately, do not have to care about it. But our power meters must show correct readings also for that situation. With this know-how, I selected the following typical loads. The vacuum cleaner as a high load and not so good power factor. A standard 60 watt bulb because it has a power factor of 1. The low energy bulb with a horrible current curve. A thin client PC with a power supply because we all use such devices. A 10 kilo ohm resistor to simulate a low power device with power factor 1. The same resistor with a 0.47 microfarad capacitor to get a power factor of 0.27. A 30 kilo ohm resistor to check if our meters are capable of measuring very low power. I compared all meters with the results of the expensive Metrahit energy multimeter. Because I wanted to have a precise reference for this video and after some hesitation I ordered this multimeter. Before you ask, yes, this connector is 3D printed and filled with hot glue. The same procedure as always. Let's have a look at the different contenders. The first is the simple KWS AC300 power meter. It shows the needed values including kilowatt hours and time. For an average consumer you connect it for a few hours and then divide the kilowatt hours by the hours to get the average. If you press the menu button it displays the power factor. The next is similar but has an RS485 interface. I thought this could be interesting for an industrial application. Unfortunately, there is no interface description and the app does not display anything. So if you need such a function, I fear you have to do some reverse engineering. Anyway, it displays 8 instead of 6 numbers. We go on with the Wi-Fi connected meters and start with the Sonoff POW Elite, which shows 4 results in its display. The sampling time is lacking. To get an average kilowatt hours, you must use your smartphone to measure time. It comes with a cloud app, but it is possible to flash to Smota and ESP Home. It has a built-in relay to switch the load and can be mounted with a bracket. The next comes without display, the Shelly Plus 2PM. It measures and switches two lines in parallel via Wi-Fi. If you need such a function, its price can be divided by 2. Also, it comes with a cloud and can be flashed with Dasmota and ESP Home. Natively, it supports MQTT, so flashing is not absolutely needed. The next is a Tuya meter with Zigbee instead of Wi-Fi. I like Zigbee because we can connect it to Zigbee to MQTT and do not need a cloud or flashing. It is pretty small, comes without the display and can be mounted with a mounting bracket. The last one is the Tuya which uses Wi-Fi and is made for thin rail mounting. This is the only one with a coil for measuring current. Other meters offer this feature too, but only for higher currents not needed in my home. It also comes with a cloud. Maybe you know if it can be flashed with Dasmota or ESP Home? I will not show you all the measurements. Here are the results measured by the Metrahit from high to low. So what are the results of the different meters? I only compared the power readings because they matter for today's videos. Here are the absolute differences between each meter and the Metrahit. 
because the sunoff and both Tuya meters could not measure the low values of the 30 kilo ohm resistor, I removed these results from the comparison. Let's quickly go through the detailed results. The KWS AC300 shows excellent overall power readings. 1.6% average deviation and the capability to read also small values was the best result of the test. The KWS AC301 was a disappointment. 8.8% error is too much, particularly in comparison with its little sister. Together with a non-working software, definitely not a recommendation. So the KWS AC300 is the winner in the simple meter category. I like its ease of use. The Sonoff was not capable of measuring the lowest power. Even if we ignore this result, it still is worse than the Shelly, mainly because of the bad result with the vacuum cleaner. The ATMS1603 was not very accurate and not capable of measuring small power. I only see its application on a DIN rail, in a fuse box and for higher loads. The Tuya Zigbee switch has a very low update speed and it did not display the lower loads. For the higher loads it showed astonishingly good results. So the winner in the connected series is the Shelly. It is accurate and can also measure small loads. If you want to keep the power meter always connected, another factor has to be considered. The power consumption of the meter itself. Because the devices with switches use standard relays, they consume more power if the relay is switched on. Here are the results. Switched off, the Tuya Zigbee device has the lowest consumption of 0.27 watts or 2.4 kilowatt hours per year. The Sonoff switched on all the time consumes 1.05 watt or 9.2 kilowatt hours a year. The Shelly is higher but has two channels. Which meter would I use for which application? For quadrant number two, which contains high power devices that are always on, all connected meters are okay. For quadrant number 4, with always on, low power devices, I would only measure the power consumption once and remove the power meter afterwards. They are always on and the power consumption does not change over time. For quadrant number 1, with rarely used low power consumers, a power meter often consumes more energy than the device itself. So the Shelly's and Sonoff's are mainly for quadrant number 3 devices which consume more and are switched on and off. As promised, I would like to measure how much typical power supplies lose. First I check the one delivered with my Chinese ThinCline PC. At a typical 15 volt DC output, it consumes 17.26 watt, so its efficiency is 87% and its idle power is 0.04 watt. Connected to the switched off PC, it consumes 1.9 watt or 16.6 kilowatt hours per year. The power supply for the Fujitsu Thin client shows the same results. So no difference between a no-name and a branded product. The cheapest of the cheap no-name 5 volt power supply consumes 0.19 watt in idle. Most of it is probably consumed by the LED. At 3 watt output, it consumes 4.43 watt, an efficiency of only 66%. Nothing to write home about. The Basos 5 volt power brick has 80% efficiency at 3 watt. And what about these two original Apple bricks? With 71 and 76%, they do not support the claim that branded power supplies have a better efficiency. The idle consumption of all 5 volt bricks is around 0.05 watt, by the way. Summarized, we saw that modern power consumers have a bad power factor and therefore need fast sampling meters for accurate readings. I'm astonished at how accurate such relatively cheap power meters measure, particularly also in low power and lousy power factor situations. This was not the case a few years ago. Specialized chips make it possible to keep the accuracy high and the cost down. Power lost in the power meters only have to be considered if electricity prices are very high. 
If you dislike a cloud, you can use MQTT or Flash the devices with Tasmota or ESP Home. Only for the ATM1603, I do not know if this is possible. We saw that permanent power meters are suitable for quadrants number 2 and 3. For number 1 and 4, they do not make a lot of sense. The efficiency of the few power supplies I tried was 87% for the ones for PCs and 70-80% to for smaller USB bricks. Both were measured at typical loads. Idle, they consume nearly nothing, so no worries if you leave them connected all the time. One last thing. As promised, I compared the new mini PC with a modern N5100 CPU with one of the old i5 and i7 Lenovo Thin clients. The new one has double the RAM, double the disk capacity and four more network connectors. It consumes 10 Watt with Home Assistant running. The i5 and i7 PCs consumed 15 to 17 Watts with a similar load. You decide which one is the better solution. The manufacturing quality of the PC is excellent and its price too if you compare it with new PCs. It has no fan, by the way. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.